Hey guys, so welcome to a new Unity tutorial today. And this is something that people have asked me about and it's opening a door in Unity. But this is the one where it's on a first person with a raycast and we left click and we can open our door and then close it. So without further ado, I will get into the meat and bones of how you should make this work. Because there's several different ways that you could do it. Well, in my case, I've got a door. And when you've got your door, you need to make sure that your pivot is on this side. And sometimes if you've exported a model from a 3D program, you want to make sure your pivot is on this side. So in Unity, you might have to click the button which is center and then pivot. And then when you rotate around, you can just pivot on that angle. If not, where you could do it rather than having the object in a 3D program is you can create an empty game object within Unity and then parent your door to that game em empty game object, but position the empty game object in at uh, this side here, just where you would have your pivot, then you can rotate that empty game object and actually make that be the pivot of your door. So that's in exactly the same kind of way. So what we need to do is be able to create an animation for the door itself. So whether you've got the empty game object or you've got the door, you can just select whichever object you've got and you can start by adding a new animation. So what you can do is go window, animation, and then animation, and you'll get the animation tab which can pop out. I just usually leave it out up here. We can click on create and we're going to create a new animation for the actual door that we have. So we can call this door open and it's created us a single door model controller, which goes directly on the object itself. What we can also do is with the door open, you can see that we've got the door open animation opened here. So what we can do is we can grab the rotate tool. Then what we can do is we can press the record button and you can see the timeline goes red. We can hold control, the control key and we can move backwards and rotate it slightly whilst holding control and it'll snap in increments. Then we can move it back to its original place. So that's perfect, that's its original place. So what I'm gonna do is, and then I'm gonna move the timeline to about one second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hold control again and just rotate it 90 degrees that way. So now we have an animation, which in one second, it goes from there to there, which is perfect. So we've got one. So what we need to do is we need to go to create a new clip and we can call this door close. What we can actually do is go to our door open script and just highlight over these keyframes, press control C, then go to door close and then press control V and you can see that door close will do the same thing. But instead of that, we can drag the first set of keyframes and the last set of keyframes and swap them around essentially. So you're just doing the exact mirror opposite and you'll know it'll be perfect as long as you make it one second. So you can see it's open and it closes and we've got two animations for that. So you can see now we want to go to window, animation, animator. And if we go to the animator, you can see that we have the animator up here. And this is for our single door model. And you can see that it plays door open and door closed instantly based on this state machine we've got here. But we don't want that. We don't want to play as soon as it starts to play the door open. We need to just create an empty state. So we can go create a state and we create empty. Then we'll, from the entry, we'll just make this the default state. And this is going to be just, we can just set the default state to idle. We don't want it to do anything. Then we have one which is open door and one which is closed door. And we can call that whenever we want. What you want to do is click on both of the animations that we created in the project panel. Make sure you untick loop time because then it won't loop the animations when we don't want to. So now we have this set up, we can just dock the animation tab somewhere else just so it isn't in the way. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new script and we're going to create our raycast now. So I'm going to right click in the project panel, go C sharp and do call this door raycast because I've created one which is similar, but we'll make one ourselves and I'll run through it with you. Okay, so now we're in Unity. What we can do is we can get rid of the two starting methods. And when we're in the doll raycast, what we're going to do is we're going to have a square bracket serialize field and we're gonna have private integer ray length. And I'll set that equal to five. So that's how far our raycast is going to go. Then we're gonna have a serialize field private layer mask and then have that as layer mask 
interact and it's going to be the layer mask to stop us interacting with other objects that we don't want and another serialize field then private string and exclude layer name and then I'll set the equal to null just because sometimes unity brings up exceptions if we don't give the actual a serialized private field something to go with so it just saves you the anguish in the end so then we'll have private and then we'll we're going to reference our script that we're going to call to make the door do whatever it needs to so we're not basing this and having it independent in one script we're having this raycast which then calls to another script and goes yeah now do something with whatever you want to do in the other script so you can have multiple versions of it so we'll say private and I will call this my door controller and then have this as raycasted object but what we need to do back in unity is create a new script called my door controller and then we can open that up in visual studio and you can see that it's now highlighted there then what we can do is we can have another serialized field private key code and then i'm going to have the open door key and then i'm going to just set that equal to key code dot mouse zero so this what this just means is we're just going to set a key which we can set in the inspector to say that when we left click we're going to do whatever we want to so mouse zero is left click mouse one would be right click and vice versa then we're going to have another serialized field private image and then we would have crosshair and then that one is equal to null and what we need to do up here we need to add a namespace with it's using unity engine dot ui and now we can get access to the image property of the ui that we're looking for then we'll have a private bool is crosshair active with a semicolon and a private bool do once because we just need to make sure if crosshairs are active or we've done something at one time one last thing we'll have a private constant string and then i'll have one called interactable tag and set that equal to interactive object and this is just going to be the tag that we use to give any object like as many doors as we want but we just use a constant which would never change something that we need to use so now we can write our raycast since we've got the sort of variable set up well so we'll say private void update with two brackets and then two left and right facing curly brackets and we'll say raycast then hit with a semicolon so this is our local um, reference then we'll say vector three dot fwd for forward equals transform dot transform direction in brackets vector three dot forward and then a semicolon on there then we'll say integer mask equals one and then this is something called a bitwise operator which checks between the items that we have then we'll say layer mask dot name to layer and then in brackets we'll say the um the exclude layer name so the name that we're going to exclude when we're looking at an object and then we'll have the comparison against the layer mask interact dot value so this is just lets us specify a name of the layer and this lets us specify the value from a, a layer that we've already named in the inspector if physics dot raycast and then transform in brackets dot position comma forward comma out hit comma ray length then comma mask then we have two brackets on the end and we can add two curly brackets below and one thing here i put a dot forward for the local variable i don't want a dot in there it's just forward and you just need to make sure that raycast at the top is raycast hit and then we have the local variable of hit then what underneath here we need to then actually find the tag so if we say that if hit dot collider dot compare tag and then in brackets here we'll say the interactable tag which we created which was the constant at the top then we'll add two curly brackets below there and say that if do once is equal to false then we'll have two curly brackets below there and say that raycasted object equals hit dot collider dot game object dot 
get component and then we're going to look for my door controller which is the variable we looked for at the top and then we can have two brackets and a semicolon so if we're looking at this we're saying that if we hit the object which would be our door and if we're do only doing it once is false then we'll say that whatever component we find here will add to this variable that we've created so we can use it later then what we want to do is add a we're going to create a method which is crosshair change and I'm going to set that equal to true for now because we'll use that later under here when you say is crosshair active is now equal to true because we found something then do once is also is also then equal to true because we found something we don't need to find it again because it'll just be awkward otherwise then we can use if input dot get key down and then in quotes we can say open door key because we created the reference up at the top so we can change that as we need to then we can say that if we've left clicked we can say that the raycasted object seen as though we've just found that script dot and then in our script we can have a method that we want to do so i'll just call that method play animation and we'll create that soon then under here we want to end the edge of the raycast and then we want to say if that we're not doing the raycast we can say that else that if is crosshair active so in this case if it's true then we need to set the crosshair change to false and then do once is also equal to false and then three under here before our last curly bracket we can say that void crosshair change and then we can have bool and call that on so if it's on or off true or false then we can say that if on equals true and and do once is equal to false then we'll say that the crosshair dot color equals color color dot red and then under here we'll have one more else which will be the last thing that we do which is then crosshair dot color equals color dot white and then we'll also say that is crosshair active equals false so i will quickly run through this now so we've got the local reference to the raycast hit forward we're going to look for the make sure that the we're looking for the layer but we're not looking for anything that isn't classed as something that we specify so if we specify here as walls as something to exclude if there's a wall in front of the door we won't be able to then go through it and interact with it then we set the raycast we look for a tag and if that tags true and we've got the check to see if do once is false we'll find the script that we want and we'll change the crosshair and the crosshair means that if in this case if it's true and do once equals false and then it will change it to red because we found it but then after that's done that we'll say that the crosshair is active now and do once equals true so we've done one now and we can left click because we found that door of ours now if we ever look away we can now see that crosshair active is checking to see if it's true we'll set the crosshair to then false because we'll set it to white because there's nothing we're looking at anymore that's of use to us and do once is now equal to false so when we find another object we can look at we can do that now we need to go to our other script my door controller and be able to do something in here don't we so what we can do is get rid of the starting methods and we'll say that private animator and then i'll have this as door anim as our name then we can say private bool dot open set that equal to false then we have private void awake and then two brackets and two curly left facing curly brackets then say dot anim equals game object with a lowercase dot get component and then in angular brackets we'll say animator and it'll find that reference for us what we could do is we could technically make this a serialized field or public but we need to find and add this to itself but it doesn't really matter that's if say the animator was on a different object and you need to reference it but that's fine now we can say public void play animation like from our from our other script that we had and then have two 
curly brackets below and say that if the door open is false, so in this case, if the door isn't open, then what we'll do is we'll say door anim dot play, and then we're going to play the name of our animation. So it was door open. Then we need to have a comma, which is going to be the, uh, the integer for the actual state name, which we can just keep as zero. And then the layer, which is also can be left as zero, like so. Then what we can also then do is, if it's not true, it's gonna be false, isn't it? So if we've got an else statement, we can add the two curly brackets below and say that dot anim dot play and then as you would expect is going to be door close then we can have a comma zero comma zero point zero f with a semicolon but in these cases we need to then set them to true or false so when you say door open is then equal to true because we've just opened it in this case and if we click it again we'll say that door open equals false so then that's perfect. So what we can do is go back into Unity, select the place with the animation. It doesn't have to be on this object, but it can be for this case. Then we will add my door controller here. Make sure your door has a box collider on it. It's got a tag of interactive object or whatever you set in the Raycast. And the layer is interact. Then we can just, we could just realistically close the things there. So the door controller script's on it, the box collider's on. We can go to our first person controller or whatever controller you might be using. I've just got it from the standard asset. Then I'm just going to add my doll raycast script there. And you can see that the raycast length equals five. The layer to layer mask to interact, we can set that to interact. We can set a layer to exclude here. You can see that my doll open key is equal to mouse zero. You can set whichever one you want. Then we can just create a quick crosshair, which is going to be our right click UI. And I will just click image and it will create a canvas and we can create something ourselves. And what I've already done if I've already created a crosshair. So my crosshair is just an image, which is five pixels width and height. And it's just white. It's literally that's all it is. And then add the crosshair to the main camera slot, then press play. And then when you're here, you'll look at an object, the crosshair will turn red, you'll look away, it'll go off like so. We left click, we'll open, we left click again, and we'll close. And really, it's as simple as that for opening and closing a door with a raycast. So you need a really simple animation, and then quite a simple script just to control when you will be able to look at the script that is on the doll. So this means, so seeing as that we can reference this script here, we could have an intermediary script between these two, which will then do like this does and find the other objects that we want and do something different. So you can do this to as many objects as you can, as you want, and you don't have to specify. And hopefully this helped you out. Be sure to support me on Patreon. Check a look, take a look at all my great assets on the Unity store and take a look at the community discord. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.